is up everyone welcome to non-fungible guys this is a podcast about nfts the blockchain cryptocurrency and everything in between uh you could say this is the web3 podcast i am I your host that. no you would okay <laughs> i would say it's a web3 podcast oh you would say it's also, that it's also about movies books what else food favorite place yeah favorite places to eat <laughs> yeah 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 you're right you know what yeah you're right favorite places to eat uh, I am NFG Ryan. For anyone that doesn't know, I like to interrupt and throw them on flow off. So, hello. That's nice awesome. You. Hey, how's it going, Ryan? I am uh, Devon. Devon C. Codrington. And I see you. So <laughs> that was re- Zoom, this is a man. this is a bad. <laughs> this is one the of the worst intro. intros. We're like two minutes in, and it's off the rails. Um, this, is, this is what happens when we like we didn't think we'd get an episode done, and now we're yeah. here. We are. You know what? Yeah, let's talk about that. We've we've been this is episode ninety one, and yep. we've been we've been rolling with it for a while. As always, I've been doing a bunch of random stuff. I think the travel we never like got our gro- we never got our groove back after I came back from Dominican. The, we never no, not yet to the groove. Yeah, we're still we're not like peak Stella yet. We're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Do you get that reference? I don't. How, how, okay. How Stella got her groove back is like a really popular movie. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we talk oh, about movies. You got to drop it. We're not peak Stella yet. She hasn't found her groove back. I haven't kind of given All right. It. <laughs> uh, I'll allow it. It's, it's, you know what? That was a decent one. I'll give it to you. Okay, sweet. Wait, so, yeah, I guess last minute. But the good thing that the always the space is always giving us something to talk about so Heck yeah i mean what have you been up to lately other than everything non-crypto <laughs> well actually so in crypto there was something that like we couldn't like, i couldn't talk about but like there was here's here's a project <laughs> let me ask you this if you had to move like you remember that time i had to move a whole bunch of eth for someone or whatever yes and like yes. Even though we know what to do, I was just like, all right, let me do this. I had to do, go here. We just needed to convert it and get it to fiat. And it was like in stable code. Like, it was a whole bunch of stuff. And even just yeah. sometimes people will be like, oh, I need to get paid in ether or whatever. And I need to be able to pull this out to, to liquidate this. How do I do this? That's actually yeah. like a big deal. Um, it's tough to do. And a couple of weeks ago, someone... Like they didn't ask me to do it because I was like, nah, I can't do that. But it was like to the tune of like a lot. I can't even say it. The equivalent of like five figures, 10 million bucks, like equivalent of that. Like someone wanted to move that, that around. And um, I was like, okay, I put them in touch with someone. And then I like, I don't know what happened there. They're probably dead now. No, I'm just joking. No, it's fine. (laughs) But, but I met some, like, that's something that had been on my mind for a while because like, like ever so often we, we cross people that, you know, that have that kind of stuff and they're doing things and it's like kind of crazy, but yeah, I met someone recently and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out maybe if I can parlay something, but they made an exchange, like a, a full on exchange for like being able to like move money around and do some things pretty, pretty new Canadian as well, but like done.com would be is what it is. Done exchange it is something that was made. And they specialize in like lots of movements. And I think the only reason I'm bringing this up is because you know how sometimes people look at whale wallets? Well, you know, yeah. So I was just reading about one of these whale wallets and it's like, I just really want to know who these freaking people are. It's like one whale has like 63 million in assets. And it's just like, okay, uh, 12% of their portfolio stable coins, uh, mostly Tether. They're holding $10 million of Shiba like wow. 10, 10 mil and oh. on their own they're not even and then a whole bunch of ftt ftx's token <laughs> oh, it's just like yeah and it's just like imagine like our wallets are tiny but imagine you have like the value of 63 million in one wallet like just sitting there doing whatever and you're not stake oh and they're not staking anything nothing yeah of course not Why but anyways yeah and yeah, I don't know. Just, just I was just That's wondering who these people are. Um, it's, yeah, it's funny you bring it up because today 
talking at work with a bunch of, I guess one guy knew about crypto kind of understands the space. And we're trying to explain to someone, two other people, like one has a friend that's kind of an immigrant to Canada now, but is working for cash and has all this money that's just kind of sitting there. Yeah. But he doesn't want to transfer it around. So we were saying, well, put a bit of, like I was saying, even for our, my friend at work, I was saying, you send money back home to like Uzbekistan or wherever he's from, somewhere yeah. over that part of the world. I was yeah. like, you go to like a money transfer, there's fees, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. you could get a wallet. Your mom can get a wallet and you could go say Ada or whatever and send it instantaneously. And then she just converts it. I don't know what the government regulations are there, but it's like, yeah. You could send it all like that. And same with your friend. He could do the same thing. But it's just interesting that we had all these conversations about crypto today. And then you kind of bring up introducing someone to the space. Now, yeah, it's funny, too, that you brought it up because Ethereum gas fees have been so ridiculous because of this meme coin season or what. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Give me a second here. We're going to pause for one second. So uh, Ethereum gas fees have been killing everyone lately. So doing these big transa- transactions, like you're saying, it's like, even me, I've been holding off moving anything to my ledger because it's like, I already own the NFT and it's going to cost me $40 to send it to my ledger. I'm like, why would yeah. I even bother transferring, right? Gas, yeah. gas fees, I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's all the, the meme coins and the shit coin trading or something thrown mm-hmm. off the space because Ethereum fees are stupid. They're starting to come down a bit now, but still gas fees are just crazy. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're so you, you found that they just keep on going up, right? The, the, this last three days, I would say they've been going down, but, um, yeah. but prior to that, it's been like, at one point I saw that like 200 guai, gui or whatever the hell we say, <laughs> you know, I say guai, everyone says whatever, but yeah. Um, All right. I don't know if that's right. Who knows? Like we were saying, epic. All right. I was saying epoch for like eight months before we got corrected. And we also did that's like a- 60 episodes pronouncing the, our favorite blockchain wrong. So who cares? Whatever. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Right. Um, okay. Well, so what do you, what do you do if you're actually trying to mint something or do something and the gas fees are too high for you? I go to Polygon and not, not Ethereum. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I like, Honestly, that's what I've been doing. It's, it's funny that. What we're talking about now is like basic crypto bullshit that we were talking about at the beginning, but we can never stop talking about it. We always have to restate these things because new people come in all the time. New people listen to the pod. Yep. And like you also sometimes things change a little bit or we have more information on what like and I was thinking, yeah, you avoid rush hour, which you know that. Um, and, yep. then, and then I was thinking use layer two solutions like and you're like, yeah, go to Polygon. Go go with Matic or whatever, uh, or Ada or Cardano yeah. or any well, other if, chain that's not Ethereum. Yeah, well, it, but if you have to go to if, if something with Ethereum related, you kind of Polygon's where it is at. Or or you could, and this actually goes back to like what I started talking about: use exchanges that bundle transactions so that they'll minimize the gas fee. Like you put it through yes. like, smart you know, contracts, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's good, like Uniswap or whatever. Anyways, uh, okay, yo, what do we, uh, this is, we didn't even say this, but this is a bit of a shorter episode because, well, you're hearing this on a Friday. No, normally we drop on the Thursday. Schedule, schedule, schedule. Impromptu. So, yeah. So, but what, uh, what, uh, what's on your mind this week, my friend? <laughs> what have you been up to? So, the franchise pass on Vegemates is ongoing now. Oh, cool. It started up. I remember. Her. So basically, yeah, basically there's the veggie mates and the junkies. Remember, it was like vegetables versus junk yeah, yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and so now the franchise pass is active. So basically you take your veggie mate or your junkie, you choose a side mm-hmm. and you need one of each at least. And so I had a veggie and a junkie. I chose veggies as my side and my veggie ate my junkie. So Damn, theoretically <laughs> burns, yeah. So theoretically, it burns the collection, right? So it's a way yeah. of like knocking down some of the collection, and then my um, uh, so by doing level one, you get to change the name. Uh, if you go level two, 
you get to change. So you, for every level, you have to burn or eat one of the junkies. Okay. So for me, I, I cho- so level two was, uh, here it is. Level one is new name. Level two is select a background track. And level three is an animated background plus a greens power up. And greens is their tokenomics, right? Their token. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So, and the cost for each upgrade, each level would be 10 ADA or 500 greens. So it's not bad. So I did not that bad today. at all. Uh, I love that you can still interact and do something with a project and it's affordable. Exactly. So do you want to know, remember my guy was the potato head with like the, the yeah. wedge, the turning thing on it. You know yeah. what I, I named him? What? Do you want to know? Yes. Tony, Tony Starch. <laughs> this is a potato. <laughs> <sighs> so stupid pretty good actually so someone was asked me today yeah someone was asked me today about uh well what do you do for like crypto and DeFi and stuff like this i was like see what i just did i named my potato pfp a tony starch they looked at me i'm like this is what i do in the space so i'm like <laughs> you worry about your DeFi yourself <laughs> this is what i do you worry about your fucking DeFi over there that's awesome yeah, yeah, yeah that's really cool i'm like i'll name potato potato pfps all day long I think that's a that's been a productive week, man. Solid, you're solid. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of I've been buying up a lot of books and, from Book.io. Mm. Uh, I've been donating a bunch because I I'm into the because they've dropped a few collections on uh, Polygon, but it's like the Wizard of Oz and they just re- released the Jungle Book as a five thousand case supply, but yeah. it's like two matic for the book, so it's like four dollars okay. or yeah. two bucks. Yeah. So that's, I, I that's just buy cheap. up. It's the cheapest one. Yeah, and it's a high supply. So I just buy up like ten at a time, and then I just donate it to people. That's how I'm on- onboarding people to uh, NFTs and like showing them what real utility would be. Right. Gotcha. I'm like, here's a here's an NFT. Yes, it's it's a cool artwork, but just so you're aware that it is a real book. And mm. they're like, oh, really? I'm like, yes, it's digital ownership. Yeah. Plus the utilities, you get to read it. And I think I think we've spoken about this before where they're going to have their own tokenomics to it. Uh, like for every book you read, remember they're yeah. going to drop book, books or something? As yeah. A token? And, and it'll be like, you'll be able to kind of gain badges for reading and, you know. Bring- right. So I, I said that's coming down the road. So like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. So I'm kind of bringing in people. But my... Only complaint, and I put it in the the book Discord, was that they don't have that Cardano Max Supply five thousand cheap mint yet. I was like, I want to bring people to Cardano. Yeah, yeah. I don't Which is weird because I mean, Poly. they were at um, CNFT Con. Like, I thought that this was like a Cardano focused company, right? You know, but it, they, it, like- it is, but. They've gone four. They've gone what? They're on four chains now. Yeah, but with all the cross mint. I don't know if Cardano is having the focus, but who knows? Maybe that's where they're seeing the uh, the money. I think their 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 home base is Cardano, but the money is on Ethereum and also Polygon. growth and, and exposure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's that's where it's coming from, right? Hmm. Cool. So, other than that, I'm trying to I, I disconnected my laptop, so I don't. I didn't screw up. I didn't want to screw up my Wi-Fi signal on yeah. uh, at work. But um, there's so many. Like, have you heard? Of the, let's just get into it. Have you heard of this Ben I've um, heard of it, nonsense? but I don't know anything much about it. Okay, so I had a okay. I had this opened up here. So a f- couple weeks back, I think two weeks back, this guy. Um, let me just get his proper Twitter handle. I think it's like. Eh, E, uh, sorry, ETH underscore Ben is the guy that created the. Yeah. So he started off. He started off with the Ben token, a like dollar sign Ben, mm-hmm. and it started gaining some traction. And then your buddy uh, Ben Ar- Armstrong, aka Bitboy Crypto, <laughs> Why <is he> started. <laughs> I don't know. I just <laughs> fucking with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. But, but he kind of got behind it and started investing in it, tweeting about it, and it the the crypt the meme token took off. Yeah, to the to the point where, in surprising terms, Ben gained traction and its market capitalization skyrocketed. The value surged from an initial peak of ten million to 
70 million. What? Come yeah. On. And then seizing the opportunity, Armstrong Bitboy Crypto struck a deal with Ben E to acquire the meme coin, the details which remain undisclosed, undisclosed. So they don't know, I don't know what he bought it for. But within with the move, Bitboy in a week had six had amassed six million dollars worth of Ben. Okay. And he took over the, the coin. Is this so, where it was like because he committed or something to not selling? Something like that. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of shit behind it because it was like he started he started like just tweeting about it and then mm. I guess it skyrocketed. So then he's and people already hate Bitboy. Oh, anyways. Man, but, like well, I know I know why you said your buddy. <laughs> so he came out and he said, You all saw you all saw what I did with Ben. Now it's time for the, the psyop. I'm going to leave this pre-sale open for as long as possible. Last one was lit. So if it gets too crazy, I'll shut it. But I want to be as fair as possible. Ultimately, the pre-sale is. And then I guess the pre-sale is open because I can't see the story. This guy. <laughs> He's like, oh, sorry. Whatever. Dude. So he, so he does this and puts a wallet address or whatever. He at, at the time of this article that I'm reading, he had amassed $6 million in, in tokens. People sent them six million dollars worth of uh, Ethereum or Ether. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like it is. It's ridiculous. So I think the guy ended up getting seven million dollars worth of ETH sent to him, and then it's been like a, just a shit show ever since. Like he's been. Everyone started fudding it and saying he's going to rug pull, and then he started. Of course, he's going to. Like he literally just did this. He made a commitment to not sell Ben for six months and like to whatever be like, I'm not a hater. I mean, sorry, to piss off the haters and people saying he's a grifter and a scammer. And then like, oh, something happens. He's like, hey, guys, uh, you know, things are different now. I've got to lift crypto up. We've got to do things, you know, so, OK, I'm going to sell this and whatever. And like, whatever. I don't know, man. And then he just sold yeah. all the tokens like on May 10th. He was like never selling. May 17th, yeah. he sold everything for 45 e <laughs> That's like a week later. And he's like, I'm gonna yep. tell you guys I'm not the I'm not this you for all the people calling me a scammer, blah blah blah. And a week later, he does it. And then he's like, Well, I'm just gonna do the same thing again and be like, hey, it's real this time. And yeah. every time he's saying this, he's making like five, six million dollars. Yeah, but listen, he did release PSYOP. Like last night, he airdropped it to everybody. So he did yeah. stick to his word and airdrop PSYOP. But leading up to it was like straight trolling. To the point, he even got Andrew Tate to make a video about PSYOP. Not in a good way. Like in a way, he was saying, I don't know. Who, like Andrew Tate made this video going, I don't know who the fuck this is. I don't, I'm not associated with PSYOP. Don't buy it. I'll never do like he made a whole two minute video about PSYOP about how Andrew Tate is not related to it. So basically he gave him free promotion and then it started, to, but this guy got $7 million. He just put an address out there and $7 million worth of ETH got sent to him. Because this is how de they're just degenerates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this so meme, meme, meme coin season. Listen, he even got, I ha did you, I sent in WhatsApp the second one Beeple. We, if you're not in the space, you all have to know people. Yeah, yeah. He even created artwork in one of his. What's his? What's his collection called? Like in a day of or in the day of the? Yeah, it's about the day thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's something to do with uh, what the hell is it called? All right, I'll actually look it up. I haven't thought about that um, in a while. People. Yeah, about like yeah, about people and what he's doing. It's every day. Either way, every day. So there you go. So Beeple created an every day of Ben dot ETH dumping on BitBoy and Andrew Tate. And if you look at the artwork, it's something you can't unsee. <laughs> Seriously? You dropped this link yeah. in our chat? In our chat. Go take a look at it. All right. Um, the second, there's two links here. Which one do I click? Uh, the bottom one. The second one. Is this going to ruin my day? You know, I have like, you know, I was eating a pizza before this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ew, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Ew. Hey, he's part of the people history now. 
and you Ew. just enjoyed it. Oh, Ew, but you're still so, you am you haven't looked away from it. <laughs> now I'm scrolling down to look at the comments, right? Yeah. Uh, so I mean the guy got Andrew Tate. He created a coin called Ben and somehow got BitBoy, and who knows how much money he made off BitBoy. Or just in general selling his Ben tokens. I mean, it's just crazy how degenerate some of these people in this space are. Then he drops Psyop. And let me pull up the second link I talked because someone wrote I'll give him a shout out when it loads. At uh Mastin done? Yeah. Yeah. So he said essentially Psyop creator ETH Bet Ben at ETH Ben crafted this project with its corresponding liquidity circulating supply and market cap so that it is impossible for us the buyers to pump and dump we can't do anything with what is that uh under 500 million market cap he prevented us from yes he prevented us from taking advantage yeah over 500 million dollar 500 million market cap he prevented us from taking advantage of his dedication and hard work do you blame him for this? Can you? This space has term, turned extremely toxic in that the crypto community is foaming at the mouth with every opportunity to make a quick buck from a crap coin with a mindless creator at the helm, which is not, he's completely spot on. Huh. Although unfav- unfavorable for us rabid degens, he assured us that his project would not be used as just another meme coin. Abandoned in the trench- trenches of loss in a week, a distant memory of the subconsciousness in a month. Well played, Ben. Well played. Hats off to you guys for not... But I guess he had a Twitter space and he's shouting mm. out a couple people for not bashing him and stayed neutral and non-biased. But he's right. So, yeah. I mean... Abandon the trenches of, trenches of loss in a week. A week. Yeah. May 10th, May 17th. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. He made so much money. Like, he could walk off and... He's good. He's set for life now. That's crazy. We could, you're right. He couldn't even pump and dump. It was too crazy. Um. So what do you want to? What do you want to do? Do you want to put an address out? Uh, no. What I'm gonna do is <laughs> based off here. Here's my plan. I've already put it out to the other Ryan that I'm uh, in talks with. We're gonna come out with. Remember in uh, NYC NFT, there was that oh. big meme. The meme going around about Are you a Ryan? There was the Ryan meetup. Did you ever see that? No. Oh, someone posted on a QR, like a QR code with the name, are you Orion? And posted the wrong post. They posted it around New York and mm-hmm. they legitimately had a Ryan meetup where everyone there was named Ryan. <laughs> so I said to the other Ryan, I said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a meme coin called Ryan and the QR code picture that everyone was sharing was circular. That's our PFP and we're just going to sell a coin. I'm like, we're going to sell a Ryan coin until a famous Ryan buys it up from us. Okay. So, so you heard it here first. My name is Devon. What, how do I get involved? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there's not enough Devons because then you're mixed up with Devons and Davons and whatever other name you've got. So, <laughs> unfortunately, you should have luck, buddy. <laughs> I understand. It's, it's, I mean, it's I guess fine. you're kind of close to D-Gen. Can nah, you change your name to D-Gen? Are you Orion? That's hilarious. <laughs> you never saw that, eh? No, oh, oh, that's pretty you good. Should look, I, I'll share it for you. But either way, like this guy, it's just, it's, it's been a wild ride for like the last week and a couple of days just watching this Ben and stuff. That off. pisses me off. It, it really doesn't help anyone. It really does. His, you mean his token? Yeah. Uh, NFT? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Benny, sorry, Benny. Yeah, it's actually that was a messed up because Ben FT is I love Ben FT. Uh, no, I was gonna say, like, yeah. oh, hold on. No, no, no. Uh Benny. Yeah, that, like, We're shitting on our own bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have people do a fucking every days of that. <laughs> He's gonna do one on Ryan. Ryan shitting on everyone. Oh man, yeah, that sucks. You know what? I, I, you know what our meme's gonna be? It's gonna be that Spider-Man that's pointing at each other. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ryan, so Ryan, good. Ryan. <laughs> oh man that's so cool yeah so yeah it's been i don't know what's your thoughts on that i mean it's kind of crazy that the guy just literally tweeted out an address and seven he from what i heard it was seven million but the article said about six million yeah i've just seen six um like just sent them just sent it like there was no Oh, this is a pre-sale. Like, so people have been call- like, there's that one tweet that's circular circulating where the guy traded in, I think it was 65 ETH 
he swapped 65 ETH for 12 PSYOPs, like 12 tokens, which is like equivalent to five cents. What and he's like, what hell? the fuck? Well, because like that other tweet I, I mentioned, the guy that summarized it, he created it so that you can't pump and dump. So this guy obviously tried to do a pump and dump or some. He tried to swap right out of the gate and it yeah. fucked him. So That's, I don't, I don't know. There's been some other drama to it and stuff, but so I don't know all of it. It just, but it just like, feels like superbly predatory and like just like, well, if people are willing to be stupid, then you know, like I'll take it. Right. So like think, we put. Go ahead. Sorry. It's just, it's just. Uh, it really. Like, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest. In this space, like like we we mentioned it before, it it makes me just want to. I don't care about. NFT projects in the same way. Um, seeing stuff like the junkies and veggie mates do things like that, that's cool. Real communities yeah. still have the tenants of the good old days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone wants that for anyone that does want to get in uh non-fungible guys pre-sale, our handle is a uh, dollar sign non-fungible guys. Yeah. We're uh, we're we're accepting all and every ADA. Uh yeah. we're keeping track because of the Big blockchain. Things are coming. So. We've got a lot, a lot of stuff planned. And right, or we'll just rug and just continue. We'll use the funds for um, our NF- our pro- podcast, right? Yeah, and then we'll just go to Vegas like we did last year. <laughs> yeah, you know, I so I just saw an announcement today actually that now you brought that up. So CNFT Con is now NFTLV, right? Like Las yeah, Vegas yeah. NFT. So they're trying to like kind of branch out. But old money said, "Listen, we're not." we're not buying a booth at those prices and we're not going to put a booth and try and do something at a sterile event. I was like, Whoa, what? Yeah. Go into the old money discord and they uh, hold on. You know what? I have it right here. Let me just sterile, scroll, scroll sterile events. He, he said sterile. It, maybe it was an event. Maybe I here. Where is it? News for the nation. Why but he was the like, word sterile though? He said sterile. Okay. So I said the robot and I have the sad feeling that CNFT con is going to be a failure this year. Wow. Participation participation seems rather low and a trip to Vegas could be a waste of time for us or anyone else. In any case, we won't be booking a booth at these steep prices. Fact is the NFT market needs a big push towards readoption if we qualify it, it as such. And if it's time to get creative the creative machine going again, rather than celebrate our projects or promote them in a sterile environment. Oh, he did say sterile environment. Mm, so okay, okay. So they're planning a, they said that we are planning a meetup in the States and come at, so they're looking at either Savannah, Georgia, or Tampa, Florida, and they're having the, the community vote on it. So, uh, oh, uh, here's a new update. Uh, so it looks like old money is going to have a Savannah, Georgia meetup, and they're just trying to figure out, they're voting on when. This wow. could all be trolling, trolling. You never know with old money, right? Yeah, it's so true. You actually really don't. Okay, so sterile is a great choice of word because. It just means like not pr- like you're not producing. You're not, not producing. producing. Yeah, capable it's of the NFT not. space. Yeah, the NFT space is is sterile. Really, it's just like it's not nothing really happening. That's going to be our um, our podcast title. Is the NFT there space you. sterile? Old money. There you go. Old money weighs Thanks. in. <laughs> Thank- <laughs> there you go. That's that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks, Richard Trickson. <laughs> Okay, oh, what's going on? With I love it. Okay, Ledger. All right, let's go. So they came out. It's a lot of controversy. I was upset. I hate at Ben first. Armstrong. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so mad. <laughs> He's so your mad. boy. He's your boy, man. <laughs> but him and uh, him and uh, Davon go way way back. <laughs> but, <laughs> so with ledger there was a lot of drama we'll get to it in two seconds but i was i was for i was against ledger for a minute and then i kind of read it read up about what they were introducing and i was like okay it's so i'm back i'm i'm in favor of ledger i'm happy with it but so what they did is they came out with the ledger recover or recovery let me just double check what they're trying to do is basically I think they're trying to onboard newer users and give them a sense of... So anyway, this Ledger Recover is so that you can back up your seed phrase online, basically. Yeah. But what it was... So people freaked out because they're like, wait, Ledger has the opportunity to update your firmware and take your Ledger seed phrase? 
if like you, how are you, never mind. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you agree to it. Right. So that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of controversy when it first came out. Basically, it was like, everyone's like, that's a back door. Like, what happens if police want to get into your ledger now? Now there's a back door into get, getting there. So what they're doing is there's par- apparently you opt. It's an opt-in feature that you pay for monthly. Yeah. And basically, they split your seed phrase into three shards. And store it with you get one shard and two third party companies get the other two shards separate. If that makes sense, you, you know, you get it. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. So, so it's like Thanos has to only get three gems <laughs> to get your leg. <laughs> <laughs> now that you put it like that, I get it. Crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they introduced this update again for anyone that's listening. It is an opt in program. And I didn't do the research because, you know, I never do. And it was a quick. We got to stop one. saying that. We do research. <laughs> you, I know. I, I'm just going to keep with the, the. Okay, fine, fine. No. Yeah, we, we don't do I don't do, just wing everything. I don't do. I wing everything. Yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. No, but basically that's what it is. The recovery is an opt-in program that costs like whatever, 10 bucks a month to have. Your seed phrase gets. So it's just a. It, they're trying to onboard newbies that are very afraid to like. Yeah. Lose that piece of paper, or like, don't take pictures or store stuff on the computer. Yeah. This is the main thing yeah. we've talked about it in depth yeah. on different episodes. Yeah, but that was the thing. It was a, it was get the recovery phrase to restore. BIP thirty nine and forty four recovery phrases are supported. So that's all it did. It, it was, mm. but the drama online, like even the ex CEO, I was reading last night. The ex CEO from 2014 to 2019 of Ledger yeah. did a whole Reddit post explaining everything. And after mm-hmm. reading it, I was like, oh, he's like, people just love to FUD and jump on this FOMO, like FUD, not FOMO, sorry. They just like to jump onto this. Yeah. Oh, I hate Ledger. And everyone's like, fuck Ledger. I'm still kind of like, you know what? If that option is available, it is a little, it makes me a little nervous, right? Yeah. Okay, let me see what do you what I gotta say about it. If I were Ledger, I would uh I would have the I would honestly do what they're doing and I would drop half of the information and let it go crazy for like 30 hours. <laughs> like to create to have people, maybe not 30 hours, maybe that's too long. 12 is enough the way things move. Um yeah, the way the space moves. For yeah, sure. because that did send everybody nuts, right? And oh, then, they went crazy. Then you don't have to do any marketing. Um, and like, not, not like, it doesn't matter. You always need marketing. It doesn't matter how big you are. Everyone knows Ledger, but it's fine. But yeah, you do Bad that. Bad news is good news. Yeah. And then you, and then you say, and then you sum it up with the full picture. So here's a tweet that um, by Hasib that was like, it's pretty, pretty simple, but it's like, yesterday I freaked out about the revelation that Ledger could spit out your private key information with a firmware update. Pretty, pretty nuts. Yeah, right. I noticed the smartest people were not freaking out. Was I missing something? I spent the evening educating myself, and now I'm in the never mind. It's fine camp. <laughs> so it's true. Everyone freaked out, went nuts, and he's like, "Okay, I educated myself, and it's actually okay." Like, if right. that's what they're doing, and it's like upgrade. You have to opt in. You have to pay for it. <sighs> Just because I think everyone's kind of thinking, well, if the possibility exists, then then the possibility for abuse or errors to occur are now right available and you can't argue that like if there was no upgrade that's gonna pull your private key then then it's not an option for you know then par- private keys are operating the same way they have and there's no option for any sort of uh you know bad actors to do anything once you introduce right. this capability re- regardless of how secure it is nothing is impenetrable it's just the law, right. it's just the, you know, the physical, well, whatever. Well, apparently you still need to like, you can't like, even if there was a back door that you would still have to confirm on the device to opt in. Yeah. So like, even if the, see. even if the police got like, that's the big thing that everyone was saying. Like if, if they were subpoenaed to get the information, do they have to give it? But like, they can't, like you said, it's all. Well, I'd know, like, say that stop. first of all, it have to, they'd have to have like a whole lot of information as to why they need this wallet. And all that time would probably be enough for someone to erase tracks or I don't know. I'm just making stuff up here. 
But the only way this thing gets hacked is through a social engineering hack, which is kind of like, you know, you know, remember the Axie hack that we love to talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where that was all talk- social engineering through one employee, right? Yeah, for the job offer and all that. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's the craziest right. thing ever. That's how it's going to work. Um, True. But but I mean, that can happen now. I honestly think it's probably fine. I'm not going to worry. About I think it. I, I'm not worried about I'll it. I'll tell you this. I'm not because... opting into it. I'll say that. I'm no. not. I, I, oh. I have my keys protected. They're fine. They're um, yeah, hundred percent. They're just right here in my wallet at all times. So, you know, my they're, <laughs> they're, stored, my, they're stored up. They're stored on an old phone in a hidden file that you. They're, no, they're just sitting. No, they're in the wallet in my back pocket. <laughs> yeah. I lose my wallet and get my private key. And there's my ID. Oh my god. And, and oh my god. <laughs> you know what's out of all of this? The funniest thing to me was that. Earlier in the morning, that when this no, news broke, Clay Nation just announced that there was a, oh, a yeah. collaboration with Ledger. So <laughs> then, awesome. I, so put it May seventeenth. It says five thirty in the morning, but I don't know if that's right. But either way, it said we want to share a brief update on our planned partnership and campaign with Ledger. We have decided to postpone the launch, which was planned for today. Uh, this is uh, a tough. <laughs> So they ended up actually postponing it because the drama was like their timing couldn't have been worse for just like it was like that morning. Hey, we're doing a collab with Ledger. Stay tuned. And then later in that afternoon, it was just like, what the fuck is Ledger doing? Yeah. So they post yeah. they postponed their I'm assuming it's going to be like a clay clay ledger or it's like going to have clay nation on it, laser yeah. engraved on it. I don't know. We'll see. But I mean, clay, see clay nation, man, still yeah. just. Pushing the boundaries. I mean, it's funny how everyone says, like, obviously, Space Buds is the OG in the Cardano space, but like Clay Nation is just like partnering with everyone and just chugging along, just they're doing all the right moves. And what's Space Buds doing other than changing their artwork and throwing everything in a wormhole? <laughs> or do they even, I mean, do they even need to do anything technically? Because they're just oh. like the OG collection. Yeah, they don't have to do anything. Um, I'm just pissed at the time last year when I was like, I have enough. I should buy a clay. And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to wait a second. And then, and then I didn't. And then I couldn't. Why would this happen? <laughs> well, why be pissed? You could buy them. I'll go to Top Collection right now. Like you could yeah. buy a clay too if you want. What's it sitting at? 2400 is the floor on clays. Yeah. When I was going to buy it, it was like 400 ADA. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. But that, was before, that. that was before, that was before. Like now, I'd be like four hundred drop jump on it, but that was before things like look at like keyboard clips club or whatever. Like they, their mint price was what four ninety or something. So I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, back then that would not have been possible. But yeah, Anyways. it's just the oh, the new space buds is only twenty four hundred. But yeah, hmm. there's a lot. I mean, the whole now's the, for anyone out there. Now's the time to be buying up NFTs. I know gas fees on Ethereum suck, but like everything's at a low right now. Yeah. And hopefully this the bull market shows up and everything goes back up and you can make a little bit of money or, you know, buy PSYOP and some other shit coins and turn out, turn, turn. Oh, actually, who was telling us? Pap, producer Paps was telling us today in our group chat uh, with uh, Robin from Base FF, AF, yeah. sorry. Yeah. They, one of his buddies that he does the podcast with, um, where is it here? He told me. Uh, sorry, one second. The guy, oh, he said Luke, the guy who runs the podcast, was telling Robin how he, he and his two buddies heard about Turbo, which I think was another meme coin on on ETH, on Ethereum. Luke and one of them, yeah, Luke and one of them didn't bother. The one friend actually put seventy dollars US in to Turbo, and sent uh, he got sent tokens a few days later. He cashed out about four hundred thousand pounds in the UK. So seventy dollars US turned it into four hundred k pounds, four hundred thousand pounds. Turbo is another shit meme coin thing. I, I say shit meme coin. I don't mean it as a derogatory term. I don't know what turbo is. Yeah, we all good. I I heard of it, but I know it's a, a coin somewhere. And you know what's funny? I tried to Google it, and it comes up Turbo the Snail movie. <laughs> you remember that movie? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so so well, that's why. Uh, Ben Armstrong was able to get that much. Mm, there you go. That's why. Just look. Keep on the lookout for Ryan. Yeah, agreed. 
token coming everywhere. Um, other than that, I think I guess we're kind of getting close to that time now. Is there anything else you wanted to try to shoot the shit about? No, nah, man, that's that. Okay, I got one last thing for. So, what are you doing Monday? Uh, I'm going to record a podcast episode. Oh, Monday. That's right. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay. I forgot about that. There's a meetup in Toronto. Oh, I thought that was Sunday. Uh, there, so, okay. For, oh, you're right. You just remind me of that. So for anyone that's farting around on um, <laughs> in, Tro- in Toronto on Sunday, there's an Ugly Bros meetup. And then on Monday is the global pizza party. Pizza Dow is throwing a global pizza party in the disti- uh, Fort York, Toronto. Pizza Dow? It's for May 22nd. 1 to 3 p.m. And it's sponsored by Be- uh, Big Get Academy, all these other time pieces. It's part, they're celebrating um, the day the guy bought the pizzas for Bitcoin. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, sorry, it's Bitcoin Pizza Day. I guess it's the day where the guy, act- and it's apparently global. There's one in like New York, Toronto, I think one in the UK. So they're all over the place. So like this is, um, um, you get free pizza? What's the deal? Free pizza. And then you get to meet uh, random people that are in the space. So the guy that told me about it, he said, come by. He's like, uh, Kusamarian is sponsoring mm. and we'll be live on the scene doing a video onboarding people to vote for the force transfer. I'm not sure what that is, but mm. just another step into our dot Sama. Kusamarian's in Toronto? So I found out one of the guys, I think, to be honest, he might even be a founder. I'm not sure, or director. On his, on his thing, he says he's a director, project manager, um, but he's in Toronto. I said, oh, he's like, oh, where are you? Uh, I go, I live just outside Toronto, but how about you? He's like, I live inside it. I go, what? <laughs> so, okay. So oh. I'd, I'd love to go down. I know we have our podcast. I'm hoping maybe to make it even if i can get down there for like two but so i don't know if you're gonna be around well, then, uh, now that i, I think, want I, I might already I do want to try there. i might already be down there well if we record and then you're already down there maybe i'll meet up but should, it'd be okay. good to just meet meet people in the space because this is like kusama yeah that's cool. that it's like let's it's a different it. ecosystem i love how we're doing this too. whole plan we're still recording here let's <laughs> yeah i just oh, want man. people to hear about it no that's for awesome. anyone that's in the area that's awesome yeah i think we just yeah let's let's talk about let's let's offline this conversation we'll run up run it up the pipe we'll, we'll, we'll circle back we'll figure something out sounds good i guess with that you know mm-hmm. stay classy everyone <laughs> stay classy <laughs> all right nfgs we out we out